It's time to pull those belts tight, race fans. The Front Stretch is coming at you. Presented by Joe's Karting and Council Bluffs. Now, here's Dan Taylor and Dirk Houston. Well, good morning to you, race fans, and welcome to the Front Stretch, presented by Joe's Karting at Council Bluffs. As always, online at joescarting.com. Fast-paced, white-knuckle racing just across the river. 23rd Avenue in Council Bluffs, next to AMC Theaters, um, Quaker Steak and Lube, the casinos, Mid-America Center. It's in that whole business district. The easiest way is when you're coming across the interstate and you see Bass Pro Shops. Well, I can't really say that now because of the interstate redesign. You should be getting off a lot earlier than that. South 24th Street exit when you are heading east on I-80 and I-29. Well, that would be south on I-29. Get off on the South 24th Street exit, head north, swing all the way around. You'll see it right there. There'll be the uh, Ruby Tuesdays, the Hooters, then the Quaker Steak and Lube. Joe's Karting is right behind the Holiday Inn Express, the hotel there. So if you do a little bit of racing and you get out of control, then you can just go and rest over at the Holiday Inn rather than driving home. Because I know every time I leave Joe's Karting... I get yelled at by my girlfriend or whoever's riding with me because I think I'm still in those carts. She's like, no, 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 Dan. you got to start driving normal again. <laughs> Does that last for like weeks for when I ride with you? Probably. <laughs> We'll say that's the excuse why. Uh, big show lined up for you today. Turn number one, we're going to recap the 2016 season for Richard Childress Racing. In turn number two, we will talk with Josh Most, who is putting together a midget to head down to the Chili Bowl starting, well, tomorrow. That's They're practicing tomorrow and then qualifying and everything starts on Tuesday. Yeah, he picked up a Justin Allgaier midget. Yeah, what a great pickup for him. And by the way, I'm going to have to ask him about it. I was down visiting family over the uh, last week, and I think I saw that car being delivered to his shop. So I'll have to see if that was his. There you go. Kind of cool to pay, pass a Justin Allgaier midget heading to a Josh Most Edge shop. But uh, anyway, so that's going to happen in turn two. And then turns three and four, we will do the Legends of the Dirt series where we will fe- feature Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series uh, race director. Richie Lewis, he's also the race director for the Lucas Oil Off-Road Series, so we'll talk to him about all that stuff. So that's all coming up on today's show. We don't have much time to get into this stuff, so let's not filly-faff around. Yes, that is an official word. I don't believe it's in the dictionary, but we're going to get it there one of these days. And let's start off with the Richard Childress Racing 2016 review with the three of Austin Dillon. Can't really find much information on his contract, which I'm actually not surprised. Um, Well, I guess I should say I'm partially not surprised because you would assume as the grandson to Richard Childress, as long as there are sponsors to fill the car, that there will be a ride for Austin. I kind of figure he's as close as there is to the Dave Despain unlimited ATM guy. Yeah, um, you're right. You're right. Um, (laughs) Yeah. And uh, and that seems to be the common theme for Richard Childress Racing. They don't have a, a stable of the most talented drivers. And I don't mean to say that derogatory. They don't have Kevin Harvick, Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano, Danny Hamlin, uh, who else? Kyle Larson. You know, they have talented drivers, just not the most talented drivers, but their sponsorships are taken care of because there's people that step up and take care of these guys. Austin is sponsored by... Um, uh, what was it? Um, shoot, a Dow and uh, several other Cheerios. There was he's got several sponsors on his car, so we're expecting him to return for the 2017 season. But there's no information beyond that as far as him and Crew Chief uh, Slugger Labby, who's going to be in that car. So uh, or after 2017, again, we expect it to be Austin. Austin has has done pretty good for himself. The 2016 season didn't bring any wins for him. He had four top fives, two poles, and three DNFs. Finished the season in 14th. Austin did make the chase, but was eliminated after the second round of the round of 12. He averaged a starting position of 14th and an average finish of 15.9. Austin will be in his fourth season in the as a full-time Cup Series driver. After winning the Xfinity Series championship in 13, he moved up to the Cup Series in 14. Although he's shown that he can contend in race wins, he can. Uh, he's still waiting for the first time that he can park it in victory lane for the Cup Series. Well, as long as as long as he makes the chase in seventeen, I see no reason why he wouldn't be around in eighteen and beyond. Yeah. You know, two chases in a row in your first five years, you're in good shape. Take the connection with his grandpa being the team owner. I think Richard will still make a business decision at a point, which we'll talk about it later in this turn when we get down to what's going on with uh, Ryan Newman in the thirty one and Ty Dillon on top of that. But we'll talk about, we'll stay with Austin for a minute now. I think Richard will make a business decision when the time calls. 
So take away the connection of being the grandfather grandson relationship. Austin's still young and learning. You have a kid that's two years out of winning his championship, now going to be the third year out of winning his championship in the Xfinity series. You give him a couple of years to find his way. He seems to have shown some strength early this year, and at certain points he would he would really show a really strong car, but then they would disappear for another five or six races as they continue to struggle. Uh, moving on to the 27 of Paul Menard. He is signed through the end of 2017. Menards is the primary sponsor for the 2017 season, and as long as they return, we can expect to see Paul behind the wheel. Paul is, again, this is another one of those family connection. Paul Menard's father is the heir apparent to the Menards uh the Mark Menards brand here in the Midwest. Oh, I was going to say, I believe it's his uncle that owns the company. Okay, so then maybe his his dad is involved in the family. It's a whole family business. Correct. Uh, zero wins in 2016. Rough year for Paul. It's zeros all across the board except for the category that you don't want anything other than a zero, and that's the DNFs. He has six DNFs this season. Average start of 19.5. Average finish of 22.6. Finished the season 25th in the points, and he did fail to make the chase. There's not much you can really say about Paul in that 27 team. They had plenty of room for the improvement, and that's about all you can go with. Paul showed some strength in 2016, but but as RCR has struggled, so has Paul. Well, I mean, he won the Brickyard a couple years ago, and uh, he has made the chase before. Mm-hmm. And he's this was a, a weird year for him with the six DNFs. Normally, he's one of them guys that's like in the top five for laps completed for the year. He's yeah. normally on the track the whole race, so... It was just kind of an off year for him, so if he gets back around and possibly picks up a win or a handful of top fives, he'll be all right. And again, we see this just like with Austin. We can expect that as long as Menards is continuing to sponsor that car, Paul will be back in that car. We don't see Paul giving up that ride anytime soon. Richard Childress Racing is at three cars. That you, according to the Cup Series, you can only have four full-time entries into the Cup Series. So if they happen to pick up a driver through another contract or through any kind of stuff, they've got a fourth car they can field, and Paul can still be safe in his number 27. Final driver at Richard Childress Racing, the 31 of Ryan Newman. He is signed through 2017 and beyond, although it is not known for how many years past this season that he is signed for. Cat is a Expected to return to the 31, as well as Granger, Wicks, Filters, Whelan, All-American Series, Kalahari Resorts, Florida Lottery, and the Freightliner brand. Zero wins in 2016, two top fives, zero poles, three DNFs. Uh, Ryan had an average start of 14.1, average finish of 15.7. Ryan finished the season 18th in points after failing to make the chase. Most of us, including you and I on this show expected Ryan the, the post race interview with Ryan after Richmond when he did not qualify for the chase he was very heated and i can't remember who the driver was that he was upset with his former employer oh is that why now I, retired is that Mr. why i Tony can't remember Stewart. yeah that that might be why you can't remember <laughs> but Ryan was very upset and we thought that was very uncommon for Ryan cuz he's usually a, a pretty calm guy he's gotten rattled before and he's he, gotten he's he's rattled some cages and he will place the blame he's yep. ne- he's never been shy about doing that but like you said that was the most heated i think he's been in a while and and it was probably because he he backed into the chase last year on points yeah. in 15 and ended up finishing second in the championship <laughs> you know never had a win and got second in the championship so and, yeah. and we felt like maybe his contract renewal with rcr hinged on getting into the chase and so we kind of felt like his frustration with not making the chase on top of now fe- figuring he was not going to be back at richard children's racing for 2017 was the reason for a lot of his anger in that and his post-race comments But then we come to find out later on in the year, I think it was about four or five races later, maybe it was later than that at at Kansas or or Talladega, that he renewed his contract for another year with Richard Childress. Yeah, he's a pretty good PR guy. I I honestly believe that the sponsors had a lot to do with him sticking around. Absolutely. I completely agree with that. Which we all assumed... Ty Dillon was headed over to the 31 when 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 Ryan Newman didn't make the chase in the 31. We thought Ryan's out. Here comes Ty in. They're going to have sponsorships and everything ready to go. Then we were hit with another broadside when Ty Dillon announced that he had signed a deal with Jermaine Racing to replace Casey Mears. Now, the contract is reported for six years. I say reported pretty loosely. I've found that on one source, and it's a pretty shaky source, but... That's the only number I've seen. And so 
you would assume we assumed when we heard that that it was a one, two, or three year deal that they were he was basically on loan to Jermaine Racing until Richard Children's Racing could get their stuff together for that third car. If maybe Ryan doesn't come back in 2018, maybe ties in that 31. Or same thing with Paul Menard. Maybe Paul's out of the 27, ties in the in the, in that car. But if this really is a six year deal, first off, that's a long contract. It's a long contract for a rookie driver, right? First of all. It's uh, also a long contract with your grandfather's, uh, you know, Mr. RCR himself. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's that would six years would be very unusual on there, um, but it might be a deal um, with a buyout. Yeah, you know, you, you've seen those type of things where they sign for three years and they're gone in a year or gone in two years because mm-hmm. that kind of stuff can happen and can be written in. Uh, you know, but yeah, like you said, it's kind of a shaky source. So. Uh, and along with the deal with Ty going over to Jermaine Racing, RCR increases their support for Jermaine Racing. Uh, so that partnership between the two increases. RCR has yet to end up in victory lane since Kevin Harvick left in 2013. The team has struggled to roll off the hauler with speed and hasn't made much progress while at the track. Austin has shown speed at times, but Ryan and Paul have struggled mightily, especially this year. That's RCR in a nutshell for the 2016 season and what the contracts look like for the rest of the year. And... Good for us, though. Our friend Brendan is back with RCR for another year in the Xfinity Series. Absolutely. He did sign that extension. Uh, I believe he signed it after Kansas because I, I felt like. Yeah, like, there was hey, a few races left. You couldn't, you couldn't have given us that nugget while we were working with you at Kansas with our crewman for a day, guys. Come on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, he's been a good friend of the show and, uh, you know, he's a personal friend of mine. Yep. So it's always fun to talk to him and uh, glad he got that signed. So. You may see him, as he's done over the last couple of years, with the occasional cup start, you know, with a South Point Chevy uh, with RCR backing. We're going to take a break. We'll come back in turn number two. We'll talk with Josh Most about his entry into the Chili Bowl coming up this week. We'll be back here on the Front Stretch. Joe's Karting and Council Bluffs has taken a page out of IMCA's rule book and gone crate. These brand new low emission engines will still have you white knuckling it all through the Metro's fastest indoor facility. Joe's Karting is now friendly for all skill levels with their brand new Honda powered engines. It's time to get to Joe's today and find out what drivers like Jack Dover, Shaley Bate, and Andrew Kosiski have known for years. Located in Council Bluffs and online at joeskarting.com. That's karting with a K. We're hooked up in turn two and still showing the green flag on the front stretch welcome back to the front stretch heading into turn number two brought to you by quaker steak and lube the official watering hole of the front stretch wild card games will be on the big screens this coming saturday night as well as the chili bowl you can catch them live on the big screen to quaker steak and lube make sure you follow the facebook page we're pretty sure that the the chili bowl will be on screens at quaker steak and lube we're just waiting to find out the nfl schedule before we decide if they're going to be on the big screen and the audio is going to be turned on too so check out the facebook page the front stretch facebook page to find out about that one guy who is going to be driving down to the chili bowl and hopefully we'll see him saturday night in the a main event is the owner of Edge Chassis, the driver of uh, several cars throughout the Midwest. I mean, God, you drive late models, couple modifieds, A's and B's. What else do you drive, Josh, most? Well, midgets. Many friends go karts, now midgets. Yep, now you. <laughs> I guess. Again. So. That's what we saw this come across Facebook, and it said Josh Most driving the Justin Allgaier, I think, 7A car, and Dirk goes, How the heck did he get into the Justin Allgaier car? So, Josh, how the heck did that happen? Oh, uh, well, me and Justin uh, got to know each other when I raced down there a year, um, one year when I was running, and and uh, when he I mean, he had a contract signed to go on into Cup, and he couldn't no longer do it for a few years, he decided to pursue that. So uh, Mike, his father, uh, owner of Who's Retired Midwest, and Justin, and uh, the longtime uh, Ebby Bergsfield that was part owner with a minute, uh, decided to try to give me a shot. And I raced a couple of years for him, ran an outdoor race, ran second, uh, second time in the car for him. Uh, so Brad Lewitt, it was a heck of a race door to door. So it was a pretty good show. The one time I went out and raced the midget outdoors. So we, uh, we ran a little bit there and then I kind of stepped back and took my business uh, a little seriously and tried to pick, pick up the pace on that, which has done very well this last year. Um, car sales are up everything's going really good good um so then i had jesse sobbing in a car we were in race vegas and he he decided to try to do that indoor deal in st louis so we went down there my dad showed up about two days late down there next thing i know uh uh, 
he he bought a car. He was talking to Mike Allgaier, and they must have come up with a pretty sweet deal. And they come over and told me that I was taking a week off and going to the Chili Bowl. And I pretty much looked at him and said, well, you're an idiot, but I guess <laughs> we'll go do it. You got cars to build. You can't be racing. Uh, yeah, I should I should be staying home. Uh, we picked up quite a few new guys. I got some new guys, uh, depending on weather and everybody's work schedule. I uh, got a couple cars maybe going out to the Arizona Swing here next month. So I'll be plenty busy. Probably should stay home, but uh, everybody actually that uh, is getting new cars is very fond of me going to the Chili Bowl. Uh, one guy, his car sitting here in the shop, and he's like, I asked him if he wanted to come get it before I left. He said, well, I'm going down there, too, so we'll just figure it out when we get back home. Well, there you go. That works. What? Um, I completely lost that question. There we go. Have you ever raced a Chili Bowl before? Yeah, uh, I've raced down there three times. First year was uh, with the Cam Fields. Uh, we had a lot of problems. It was a last-minute decision. I was actually racing many sprints. Uh, it was back in 2009. Um, that was the first year I got in one, uh, and we had quite a few problems. It was basically a car that was just sitting out back. Uh, they felt bad. We made a deal. We went and raced a couple times uh, with them. Uh, went went the week before, uh, two weeks before, at Decoin, Illinois. Went and raced there, and then we took the car back, and that's actually the year I won the Tuesday night A main uh, qualifier uh, at the Chili Bowl in 2010. So. So you've got a little experience at that track. It's not going to be something completely new. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot like the Boone Super Nationals, other than you only got one day, one shot to make it in. Uh, it's a lot of cars, a lot of good quality cars. Uh, those things are way different to drive. Um, I mean, if you talk to anybody that's ran anything, those things, I mean, they're a handful. When they're set up correctly and they're good, they're still a lot of fun, but I mean, you can sit there and you probably watch some videos on YouTube of uh, people from in the infield. And, I mean, every driver's just sawing the wheel back and forth, going down the straightaway, keeping it straight. I mean, it's not no Cadillac. I mean, it's a lot of horsepower and lightweight car. So, I'm, I'm a little worried for you, Josh. Uh, yeah, you know I like you, but uh, sometimes you get a little rough behind the wheel. Uh, <laughs> you can't be that rough with these midgets, man. <laughs> they could do a lot of damage on just a little bit of a tap. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been upside down. I mean, I, I say everybody that goes down there has about an 80% ratio of getting upside down. They probably got the odds going against them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're real tight racing, hard racing, open wheel. Uh, I mean, there's it's just the luck deal, I guess. I mean, I've seen Sammy Swindell get into a guy and wheel hop and was on two wheels, looked like he was going over, and m- magically it just didn't, you know, and you see some guys just barely touching, and they're 20 foot in the air, and yeah. and they're done for the week. It's like know? a Hollywood so. explosion just off of a little tap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it gets pretty crazy. I mean, there's people that you know, run over the berm a little too much coming off of the corner, and you're on the gas, and they'll do a wheel stand, and the back bumper touches the ground. And the next thing you know, you're dancing around and upside down. Yeah, it's uh, the big thing down there. I mean, you know, how good are you at drawing normally? Cause I, that, that's the huge deal down there. You, you can have the best car in, in, you know, out of anybody there, out of the best, what, they got 358, I think, this year. You can have the number one car, but you draw, you know, to where you got a 10th place start in your heat race or whatever, and you're done. Yep. I mean, Brad Loyette's had very many good drivers in his cars that were more than capable of winning the show every year. Um, and even Brad himself down there, I mean, they parked right up front and it just seems like, I mean, they're more than fast enough or faster to be able to win the show, but you just got to have everything, all your cards play right. And I mean, some of them guys, I mean, not, not taking nothing away from any of them that won that thing. Um, especially like Kevin, I mean, Kevin won it multiple years. Same thing with Sammy. Um, I mean, Rico's won it the last two years, so he's yep, going to try for yep. a triple. And, yeah. and, and even Rico, I mean, they are a hell of a wheel man. Uh, you know, I've watched Kyle Larson run really, really good down there, and I've seen him one year get upside down in his practice night or a hot laps in his qualifying deal, and it, it junked the car. I mean, it was just one of the deals where a guy bobbled and he weaved, and it was a bad deal, this first corner deal, and it, it junked the car. So, I mean, anybody, anything could happen, uh, you know. Um, you just hope for the best, I guess. 
Let's talk about Edge Chassis for just a little bit. I know that, uh, the like you said, the business has taken off quite a bit the last few years. I know um, you've had success with it, and I-, I was really impressed with Josh Sink, who's one of your drivers at the end of last year. He came on hot between I-80 and Harlan. Who's uh, who's some of your other drivers that you're expecting to come back for the 2017 season and maybe some new guys that you're that we can see in Edge Chassis? Uh, we basically got everybody that's uh, that's been here is continuously uh, here. Uh, yes, Josh Sink is one that, uh, I guess locally, everybody he won one race in a B mod. Everybody kind of considered him a low ball kind of guy. I mean, be happy to be in the top five. Got in one. Uh, I mean, just right away, uh, he was happy. Tweaked on it a little bit. Got him going ex- extremely good right off the bat. Uh, Jared Weston was the same thing. Uh, he struggled for a little bit finding his liking. Uh, we had to change some stuff. Went through some stuff. Um, we had some updates partially way through the year and you could see like our shock program i changed some shocks and it really picked guys up um we got a few few new guys some sport mod guys uh, a couple in eastern iowa and then uh tom van dyke from denison Mm. area um he races up there at uh, harlan and crawford county you know quite a bit um a couple of my guys andy gage uh he's a newcomer uh he's been Racing about a little bit of everything, stock car, B mod, A mod. He jumps around a lot. He's coming back into it. Kind of stepped back and got out of the seat and got out of racing. He's coming back, so hopefully get him going here real early out in uh, Arizona. Get him going. Uh, Andy Wilkinson out in Nebraska mm-hmm. uh, is another A mod. So I mean, we've picked up some some new guys. Try to get them going. That's one thing I concentrate on. I think we got a really really strong, acceptable B mod program and. I've relayed some of that over in our A mods again and step back and concentrate on really getting it going and, and selling some cars in that area. So, Well, you do a good job. Josh, appreciate your time. Best of luck this week down in, uh, in, in, in Tulsa for the, uh, for the Chili Bowl, and uh, best of luck in the 2017 season. We'll talk to you soon. Yep, thank you. Have a good one. Thanks, Josh. Yep. Again, uh, Josh Most, driver of the A mod, B mod. Uh, he also drives a late model. I mean, he's got a lot of different cars out there. Just, you never know when he shows up to a track exactly what he's going to drive. Uh, but he has Edge chassis and does very well for himself with that. And, and quite frankly, I think he does one of the best. I, I don't know a, a lot of the chassis manufacturers, but uh, I, I see Josh out at, at the race tracks a lot racing other people's cars trying to help them shake it down uh, which is big for customer service and it, it means a lot for these drivers and they spend as much money as they do on chassis that the guy who builds it will come out and help you set it up right uh, which is key that's key in this sport all right we got to take a break we'll come back at turn number three we will talk with our legends of the dirt series richie lewis we'll be back here on the front stretch There is no such thing as an off-season at Joe's Karting. No matter how cold it is outside or how much snow is on the ground, you'll always be warm and dry inside at Joe's Karting, the Metro's largest indoor karting track. Located in Council Bluffs on 23rd Avenue next to AMC Theater, find Joe's Karting on Facebook or head to joeskarting.com for hours, pricing, and a schedule of booked parties. That's joeskarting.com. Karting with a K. It's time to get to Joe's Karting today and find out what all your friends already know. If you love wings, if you love rings, and all kinds of other tempting things, great times, great food, get to Quaker Steak and Lube. Quaker Steak and Lube is the official watering hole for the front stretch and the best place to catch all the NASCAR action today. Open at 11 a.m. with delivery available to Council Bluffs. Great times, great food, get to Quaker Steak and Lube. Feather the brake and get back to the gas. Dan and Dirk are headed into turn three on the front stretch. Welcome back to the front stretch. Heading into turn number three, and it's time to continue our Legends of the Dirt series. We're going to step a little bit outside of our normal box. Typically, we're talking to occasional car owner, but mostly drivers. This guy is the Lucas Oil Late Model Series Director. Also, the Lucas Oil Off-Road Series Director. He's got a busy name, a big business card, and a lot of responsibilities. Richie Lewis, how you doing, sir? I'm blessed to doing great. How about you guys? Same here. We can't really complain about anything, although it's pretty frigid here in the Midwest. But uh, we're not going to complain about it because there's nothing you can do about the weather. There you go. There you go. <laughs> if you got to stay warm. Easiest way to start this whole process off, since you seem to be a bit of an enigma as far as research goes online, how did you get involved in dirt racing? 
It's kind of a funny story. Obviously, it was uh, yeah, it was a Saturday night fan at our local track here in a little town called Waycross, Georgia. Um, and then friends, his dad had a car. We were steady underneath that and on top of that thing for every minute we could. We were always trying to trying to figure it out and understand what made it work, and always trying to you know make 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 ourselves look smarter than the next kid. You know about what we knew about races racing and the race car versus the other one. Uh, my dad was a huge huge. Uh, or in the early days of, of NASCAR, even back to the last beach race and the first uh, Daytona uh, race uh, back in the late 50s, early 60s. And so we were always at, uh, at, at you know, NASCAR races, uh, local short tracks and things of this nature. Um, I kind of took a, uh, as as I got a little older and got out of high school, <clears throat> did like a lot of people, got married, had kids, and didn't do the traveling thing until my kids were grown and basically out of high school before I really set sail into, you know, trying to make sure, I mean, to to be involved in what I always wanted to be involved with and figure out a way to make it make me a living mm-hmm. um, until uh, the mid-90s. And then I started stepping out with the Have a Tampa series, the Have a Tampa Dirt Racing series, and we uh, we traveled all over. It was a uh, was a really cool deal. Met a lot of really neat people. Um, showed some promise there, and was given an opportunity to uh, to move up the ranks. Uh, I started out at the very very bottom, just hanging banners, uh, just helping with uh, you know contingency decals, just just to you know the, the very very you know, basics of what a lot of series do and take care of. And Mike Swims obviously was, uh, um, the owner of the half a Tampa dirt racing series. And also the, you know, the family, the swims family owns Dixie their own speedway up in the North, uh, North Georgia area. So as I, as I met these people and we, uh, we realized, you know, we had a, you know, we had a lot in common. Basically our faith was a big part of it. And hmm. we became very, very close friends and, uh, was granted the opportunity to, uh, to kind of take the ball and run with this thing uh, after a couple of years of being out on the road and uh, was able to uh, uh, take from going to hanging banners to, you know, the very, very entry level position to and made it all the way to the series director role. Um, <clears throat> just have always had a basic solid foundation and understanding of, of motorsports and what it takes to survive in motorsports. And my dad was a, was a huge part of that. A lot of, a lot of family and friends, um, we were just a, we're just a racing community, even to this day in Waycross, man. I mean, you come through this South Georgia area, there's a lot of late models here, there's still a lot of racing that goes on in this area, and it's it's kind of out from under the radar a little bit, if you will, but it's uh, it's still just one of those towns that you go to and you go into Applebee's and you see pictures and things on the wall of, of old late model races and old dirt track races here at our local speedway. So we're very fortunate in that, you know, we've kind of been a hotbed for that, a small hotbed, but certainly a hotbed for that. For years and years, so um, worked with Have a Tampa series, and it was uh, it was sold and and went into the UDTRA, the United Dirt Track Racing Association. That was a big part of all that. It was a big part of the whole Bristol when they put dirt on Bristol uh, was a uh, was you know kind of our claim to fame with the UDTRA side of things, and uh, uh, was was a big part of that. We enjoyed that a lot and learned a lot uh, by working with those uh, those people. There at, uh, at Bristol Motor Speedway, and, and a couple of years that they did the dirt, um, and then it was sold. You know, things kind of went a little crazy in the in the dirt late model world, if you'll remember back in that time. And it was sold and kind of bought and sold, bought and sold, and, and worked with the first year of the Extreme Series. And uh, there was some direction and things that were going on there that were <clears throat> great and new ways of thinking about things. But it was it was a little different than what the dirt late model world was really ready to swallow at the time. And I was given a uh, a position with uh, within NASCAR and and worked for the NASCAR. Uh, I worked the uh, for the Bush Grand National Series and was a part of uh, of some uh, wind tunnel testing and wind tunnel uh, stuff that went on uh, from a layman's kind of standpoint. Was in there. Uh, spent a lot of time with that in the aero package at the that the Bush Grand National uh, Series used right up until they their speedway package until they went to the, the Camaros and Mustangs. But the Wicker Bill and all that stuff, I was a part of that so, that group of people that were in and out of the. Who was the, the series winter. director? Who was the series director when uh, you were? Ryan Dehart. Ryan Dehart was. Ryan okay. Dehart's the one that hired me. And uh, he sure was. And, uh, so after John uh, Darby. Well, Darby was with the Cup Series. Yeah, that's what I said. But he was with the Bush Series yeah. before that, so. Yeah, 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 and then then Brian, you know, uh, 
Brian was there and I was uh, Dehart was who I actually worked for, and then uh, I worked for Darby on Sundays with the with the Sprint Cup Series uh, at that time as well. We would you would work with uh, uh, Alton with uh, the trucks and Brian with the Bush Series, and then with uh, Darby with the Cup Series. You would work all three series basically yeah. there. Kind of, the way they have that thing structured is pretty neat. Well, I thought There's I, I thought. Richie, I thought we'd yeah. met before because I worked for uh, uh, Wayne Otten in the truck series from '99 through '05. I got you. So I was I working. You, yeah. I was working the Bush races and I was working the Cup races, just like you were talking about. So yeah, exactly. I mean, that's how it was work. Yep. I mean, you, you, you're, you're stating. I mean, exactly what I'm saying, and that's. Uh, I was a part of that, and uh, and and then was uh, uh, then then as I as I was doing that and doing the travel with that, it was all great and wonderful. And then I received a a call from Hoosier Racing Tire, and uh, I basically managed Hoosier Tire South for three years. And during that time uh, is when Mike Swims and the Lucas Oil people came together, and then I was given a opportunity to. Uh, to rejoin the dirt late model when it, a lot of that had all kind of cycled through and, and then Lucas picked it up and, and was, you know, given dirt late model racing, a new breath, breath of fresh air. And, um, I was able to, to be a part of that really from the pretty much from the ground up once Lucas got there and, and, and to, had taken that over. I was hired by Bob Patterson, the vice president of Lucas oil to come in and to, uh, to take that over and, uh, take the ball and run with it. And, so we did so and uh, uh, did that up until the past three seasons, three or four seasons. And then we've pretty much, we've, we've promoted uh, uh, Rick Swally, who's a tremendous, tremendous uh, young man with a tremendous amount of talent and care and, and uh, has, has a lot of con- concern and passion for dirt late model racing. Rick and I worked together for, for 10 years, day in and day out, side by side. I mean, he was my, has been my right hand man and uh, still basically, uh, oversee, uh, Rick, I don't oversee the day-to-day operation of it anymore. Uh, Rick has stepped up and been able to, to achieve the goals of taking over the, the title of the series director for the, the, uh, the Lucas Oil Lake Model Dirt Series. I was already working out on the West Coast, and he was he was kind of doing it for the most part, if you would, and uh, he just earned the right to, uh, to take that role and take that title, and is doing a tremendous job with it. I mean, Rick and I talk every day for sometimes two to four hours a day. Wow. Uh, but we talk every day. I mean, we, we still do a lot of the same things that we've always been doing. Obviously, he's given it a breath of fresh air with, with some new thinking because of the technology that is changing within dirt lake motor racing. And um, we, still, uh, we still apply our basic rules and principles of running a business and uh, been able to have good, good success and a lot of fortune with uh, – uh, with that, you know, with our drivers and teams and team owners, uh, you know, our, our series officials and, and, and then Rick and Ashley and, and, and Jeremy. And uh, now we've got Jason Durham. We picked him up this winter, which is a great asset to, to our series because, you know, basically Jason was uh, Jared Landers, you know, crew chief. And then when Jared got hurt and they began to, you know, kind of figure out what they were going to do there, we were able to work a deal with Lance. And we we put, put J- brought Jason on board. We had to make some changes there and uh, – he seems to really be working out nicely for us. And we've got Jeremy Shields has stepped in with our marketing and, and, uh, you know, Cole's still there from the, you know, taking care of a lot of the infrastructure on the inside, as far as, you know, our networking and things of that nature. So we still pretty much have the band all together. A lot of new faces, but still a lot of the same people there as well, but it's a, it's a really cool deal. And it's something that we're very, very proud of. With the growth of social media over the last five years, has your responsibilities grown exponentially with social media, or are you able to divvy them off into other people and have to divide up and say, okay, you're in charge of this social, this form of marketing, you're in charge of this form of marketing, and so on? We do that, but we still, we still keep a real, real tight rein on that, and 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 we we grow with it. We we have the the mentality that you can either get run over. By the social media trainer, you can get on board, mm-hmm. and we chose to get on board. I mean, I can remember when this Facebook thing, when nobody could even spell it yet. If you'll just allow me to, to be silly and say it that way, you know, uh, everybody thought a mouse was a rat on a computer. Didn't right. realize, you know, it was just an operating tool. So, so we we bought some of the very first, and I, I challenged Rick Swally. This was one of those challenges that he stepped up and and he took on and he took ownership in this. Just just to a, a dare and a challenge and, a, and almost a, a swear and a bet that you can't do this. And bought the Facebook for dummies. The very first came out. 
just to learn how to do this and learn and understand some infrastructure behind it. And, and since then, I mean, when you look at, you know, where we're at and, and our, and our likes and our, and, and, and our campaigns that, that we run through Facebook and, and through all of our social media platform, we're, I feel like we're, you know, we're, we're really in, in, in the swing of things with it, you know, but to answer your question, it, it is divvied up. Some is results because there's results people. Some of it is stories and storylines because there's pre and post race and, and it's edited and handled through, through, through our staff. And we have all that kind of divided up to separate the workload out nicely so yes, we we do that, but at the end of the day, you know, we're we're pretty much trying to make sure you know that that we've got an eye on what's being posted, when we're posting it, while we're posting it, and and making sure you know to try to have you know <laughs> good grammatics, you know, big, big, <laughs> big, you know, politically correct, you know, have good grammar and yeah. and, and things of that nature, and, and solid content with pictures and and all the things that we learned. I, I laugh so the hard there. Beginning. I laugh so hard there because it seems like grammar is becoming a very big issue with this world. Yes. And yeah. a lot, there's some businesses that post things, and I think did, did somebody you, read this. Yeah, <laughs> did you really proofread that, or did you just yeah have it, your three year old type it out? <laughs> when you when you send out three three hundred press releases and communicate, when you send it out, you know that many, it's easy for that to happen. I, I get that. There's no excuse for it, but I, I I do have a sensitive heart for it because I understand when you're riding down the road in the in the passenger side of a vehicle at three o'clock in the morning trying to get to the next racetrack. And you're you know, one eye one eye closed and and all but you know nine of your fingers are numb, <laughs> can't even feel it anymore, and you're trying to pull this off. I get it, yeah. you know, I, I really do. But I also understand that you know what it says to a sponsor, what it says to a marketing agency, you know what what people expect, and uh, and that's that's why I made the mention of it. That's why we understand how important that really is. Well, I think you guys are carrying the banner, and a lot of the local dirt tracks, the the Saturday night guys, the Friday night guys, they can learn a lot from the way that the big series like you guys, the Lucas Oil Series, does things. Because like you said, you can either get run over by the train or you can hop on board. I think a lot of these local tracks have put their heels in the ground, and they're getting run over by the train rather than jumping on board and, and working with it. I, can, I see that from time to time, but I, Again, you do see racetracks that are that are picking that up, and they they understand this um, and realize. As let's back back up for just a minute there with that, because there's still one thing that, that's still very very true for people like you and I that I'm sitting in front of my laptop right now, and we'll be here until you know whatever time today that it takes for me to to finish up what I'm you know the, my my task that I'm working on today. But you and I both know there's still a lot of people in the world that still have yet to buy their first laptop. They may just may have never even had a smartphone yet, may have never even had a PC yet. But guess what? Those are the same customers to your sponsors and my sponsors to my series and to your show and everything that you still, I think it's from time to time we still have to be careful in that we don't put all of our eggs in one basket to this day. We still make posters and flyers that we'll nail to the side of, we'll staple to the side of light poles, okay? Mm-hmm. When it was when that was cool, you know, that's when you knew what was going on in town, and you know that light pole in your town, and it's got fifty thousand staples in the side <laughs> of that. Right? Remember when that was cool? So yeah. you got to understand that there's still a segment of this that this thing is still in its infancy. I, I believe that. It, it's big it, and it's great and it's wonderful as it is. It's it's not a hundred year old bottle of wine. Yeah. Well, I know there's okay. there's a lot of racetracks. I I know we've seemed to. I don't know, hit a wall with it maybe locally with this Facebook Live deal that's come out because so many of these people in crews and drivers' girlfriends and such are standing on top of haulers and literally showing the race live. And I think it's costing gate money, these promoters. And locally, I know they're really fighting it. It's really become yeah, a nightmare. Yeah, and that, that's going to be a difficult uh, exchange between freedom of speech and people's rights. And there, there's, there's going to be, that, that, that's going to be, that's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Yeah. Okay. Oh, absolutely. That, that, that's, uh, that, that, there's a lot to that. And I get that. I'm, I'm one that is perfectly fine with live events. I've, I've, we've done enough live stuff now that we realize that that does not hurt the back gate. But now when you're talking about the difference of a, of a weekly show that just struggles to put 500 to a six, 700 people in a grandstands and, those people that will sit and watch that, I don't know about you, and I've watched some of the live stuff, and some of it is pretty good, but most of it is still, you know, it's still kind of antiquated, if you will, when you look at the footage. It'd be hard to make a call 
Mm -hmm. Did that guy spin him or did the guy get on the brakes? Did the guy hit a little rut? Did the guy do this? Did the guy do that? You know what I mean? But that'll Mm -hmm. get better because now you're seeing additional cameras that that bolt right up to your your iPhone and your droids and things of this nature. It's probably going to help the quality of that, you know, at, at some level. But uh, again, I mean, I, I don't know about you to be able to watch it through Facebook Live. I've always, I've still said at the end of the day, there's still not, TV does not do our sport justice. Absolutely. It does not. And it will, I don't know what they're, that, that's, that's the key element. The, the day that they make a football game where it's more exciting to sit in your living room by yourself or with your wife or your whatever, your, even your buddy having a, having a barley pop. And it's still better than going and, and, and the sights and the sound and, 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 and all the, the, the vendors and all the people. There's still still nothing like walking to movie theater smelling the popcorn, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, so we gotta we gotta be careful with that and, and, and let that come to us and let's as as ambassadors to our sport, let's not solve the problem until we really know what the problem is. You know, we, we gotta be be careful there as, as good stewards to our industry. Uh, again, because you can get run over by this thing, and now you all of a sudden you blackballed yourself or you put yourself in a, in one of those compromising situations. But I do, I do understand it, and and I can understand exactly why you made the statement because I have that promoter with a lot uh, that conversation with a lot of promoters. You know what? Are, what about that? What are we going to do? Man, I don't know. I don't. I don't know that that was developed enough for it yet to know. But I do know that that it is a fear, it is a concern, but. You and I both know and realize that their biggest fear as well is, you know, they still got to have good weather. You know, they still, I've always said, you know, grandstands, uh, the sunshine grows people in the grandstand just like it, it grow a beautiful patch, you know, corn patch. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's still kind of the same. So but let's hope that that's not going to be something that, that puts us or sets us back and we have to go through this huge valley, you know, this big dip. Um, but but the jury's still out on that, and, and I, I understand why you make the statement. Believe me, it's it crosses my mind. I just, whew, it's, that, that's a tough one at this point in time because I don't know that we know enough yet to to say what's legal, what's not legal, what's you know, uh, you know, can they can they shut it down? Can they block it some way? What uh, I've, we've I've had several of those type, or I say several, but a couple of those conversations that goes well, you know, what if you just you know whatever but now you start blocking a signal and now a guy needs to call 911 you're in trouble there you know so yeah, it's, yeah. It's, this whole thing just i don't think it's fully developed yet we're going to take a break we'll let you catch your breath we'll come back in turn number four we'll take about another five ten minutes of your time to learn more about the current state of the lucas oil series that you run we're talking with richie lewis we'll be back here on the front stretch are you looking to book your next outing Look no further than Joe's Carding in Council Bluffs. Located just north of Bass Pro Shop, Joe's Carding can handle outings of well over 100 plus people. Bachelor parties, corporate outings, team building, birthday parties, and much more. Give Buddy a call today and reserve your outing. Joe's will even work with local restaurants to cater your event. Book yours today at joescarding.com. That's Carding with a K. It's time to get to Joe's and find out what everyone already knows. It's checkers or wreckers as we enter turn four. On the Front Stretch, presented by Joe's Carding and Council Bluffs. Welcome back to the Front Stretch, rolling into turn number four. And uh, we want to make sure and say thank you to everybody who joined us today on the show. Josh Most racing at the uh, Chili Bowl coming up this week. You can catch him on Mad T- Mav TV. And we're continuing to talk to our second guest of the day, the Legends of the Dirt Series interview with Richie Lewis, who is a man of many titles. But uh, apparently the Lucas Oil stuff kind of on cruise control. You've got a good crowd behind you that's uh, helping you run that series. Oh, man, it's, you're, you're only as good as your people, and you've got to be able you have to enable your people uh, to be able to go out and do great, wonderful things. Um, you don't need them being 10-year-olds with a shotgun and wondering why there's a hole inside the barn. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you can, uh, you know, people, people that are, people are passionate about our sport and about our industry, and, and there's so few positions and in places uh, that you have to, uh, you know, and there's so much to do, but there's so few positions and places to put people, but there's so much to do till you, you, you can't do it all. You can't be at all, all places at all times and you can't be all things to all people. So you, you know, you have to have to be a people person. You have to admit, you know, be able to manage people. I always tell people all the time, I don't have all the answers, but I promise you, between me and my group, we'll get you the, we'll get you a solid answer or, or direction. And if nothing else, we'll tell you what you shouldn't do. If we can just keep you off of landmines that, that cost you money or, 
or, or safety concerns or, or things of that nature, then, then we've done a good service. Amen. Or promoters, <laughs> or races, or for teams, you know? Yeah, amen. Let's talk about your day-to-day responsibilities. Uh, I know we're right now we're in the off-season, so as the series director, you're probably involved with getting schedules. Well, schedules are out. They're pretty much finalized. So you said you got a list of things you're doing today. Can you let us into the laptop of Richie Lewis? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I'm actually just turned down a, a phone call from a guy that's trying to beep in. I'm doing a, a tire test in off-road side. We're looking at – we use open competition tires, and we allow – all the brands and manufacturers to come in and play in our Pro 2 and Pro 4 and our Pro Light ranks. The problem with that is, is these tires have huge, tremendous deep lugs, you know, almost two inches deep. They throw a lot of dirt, move a lot of dirt. Big, big, tall sidewalls, a lot of sidewall deflection. Making a performance tire that can perform and fly and jump and corner right turns, left turns, and do everything you need it to do makes for a very, very expensive tire. We do surveys from time to time during the year where we just kind of keep a pulse on our customer base. And some of them have came up with the idea, what if we went back to a DOT tire? What if we slowed these things down, but we started out with that old modified cliche, well, if you put them on eight-inch tires, it don't matter how big the motor is anymore. You know, it kind of takes care of that. And that goes into policing tires. There's many, many layers to that. We can talk about that as much as you like. But the what I'm working on right now is a DOT tire instead of an open comp tire for off-road. I have a tire test coming up later this month, so I just sent out another letter. And I talked to a lot of them, and, and they're like, okay, what about this? What about that? Can we do this? Can we do that? Because it's, it's new. It's a completely different world than what they're used to. Now, they, they ran DOT tires years and years ago and got away from them, uh, and just because, you know, it's the only four things that touch the ground, and the better those four things are, the faster the automobile will run. Yeah. It don't matter if it's a motorcycle, if it's a go kart, if it's a lawnmower, if it's a full race vehicle. We all know that. That's, that there has a lot to do with that. that there's a lot of speed secrets there. And so, with that said, we're wanting to, uh, uh, we're going to do some tire testing and see how that goes. So, that's one of the things I'm working on. Also, rolling out a new uh, LS3 engine package for one of my classes, which is a fuel injected um, GM engine. Um, makes a lot of horsepower, ton of torque, really, really sexy little piece. And <laughs> We are, uh, we're, we're rolling that out. So uh, we're at that press release and there's some people waiting on me. Hey man, did you get a chance to read this yet? And I'll get back to them here in just a moment. So those are just a couple of things. Also working on, always working on your agent, you mm-hmm. know, your agent is collecting your sponsors and, 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 and contingency people and things of that nature. So I've worked on that some today as well. Worked on some travel for some meetings that we have corporate meetings next week, just to kind of give you a brief look into what I've been working on today. Do things calm down for you a little bit, or do they ramp up after PRI? They'll they'll calm down because of the holidays, but it is it is game on. Your like I was talking about Jeremy Shields with our late model series, uh, Ken Johnson, uh, Alex Strowler, Robert Wilson, sales guys for both series, and it's it's wide open for them to try to uh, uh, get all the deals done, get all the ink dry, all the signatures and ink dried, and banners and all the deliverables and all that activation we've got to be prepared for when we roll into Golden Isles and when we rolled in when we rolled into Lake Elsinore with our off road series and, and the late mall series respectively with those two tracks that were mentioned, you know. So it's busy, busy work. I've always said that I can't wait to get back racing because sometimes you just kinda of get in the grind then and you're you're moving so fast and you're just you know, you're just going at it. You're doing what you work hard all winter to be able to go out and do and set up. Now you're just out. Now, now you're now you're you're just you're just you know you're taking care of the logistics. Now you're a logistics magician. You know you're just <laughs> trying to be do as much as you can do. You know you're putting ten pounds of sand in a five pound pail, but you do it day in and day out. So it, it kind of becomes the grind, and you just go and do it. And you know you're always there to try to build relationships and prepare yourself for the next season. Uh, once we get to the fourth to a half of the way through the season, we're working on next year. You know, wow. we're we're already working on it. it. You have to do that in order to have your rule book ready and your schedule done. By the time you get to the last couple of races of the season, if you start the month before that, you're 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 way late. Yeah, you're way and late. You're, and you got to have those pails full. I mean, you talk about putting ten yeah. pounds of sand in a five pound pail. You've got to have all that sand in something by the time the first race rolls out. You better, you better. I mean, you know, by, by the time that last race ends, you better have direction for them guys. They need to know what they're going to be racing with and what they're going to be doing. 
this tire test that I told you about on the 24th is for 2018 rule book. I'm working on 2018 today. Wow. Okay. This engine program that we're about to roll out and do the press release on today, we've been working on that for two years. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's that, that's what it takes. That's what the average person doesn't know or understand a lot of times. Oh, we just order some of them. We call some that we can get this, we can do that. And they'll beat your eyes out before you get to the first race. They'll have, <laughs> they'll take this same $15,000 platform and it'll be a $30,000 platform before you leave the first race. Yeah. What so, keeps, what keeps you up at night? Is it rule books, Facebook live? Is it drivers that are giving you headaches? What, what keeps you up at night? All the above? <laughs> A little, but, but to be honest with you, probably what keeps me up at night is, and I don't know how to say this. I, I almost wish you hadn't asked me. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I, I'm going to be Abe Lincoln. I cannot tell a lie. Okay. Uh, at the end of the day, what bugs me the most are the people that, the uninformed people, the people that won't pick the phone up and call you and ask you for clarification on something will just make it up in their own head. Yeah. Okay. And now it becomes reality to them. And now, now all of a sudden I become a perception cop. All I'm doing is out battling the perception instead of reality. Mm -hmm. That's what keeps me awake at night. And that's just people that just, they'll, 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 you know, they'll get through, they'll wash and clean their race car and they'll, they'll scale it and they'll be doing all the things. Then all of a sudden they'll, they'll start cracking them beers and get in a little that, you know, and black hole. The black helicopters yeah. start flying. Yeah, now all of a they're sudden, after me. <laughs> now, well, yeah, now now they have. Well, they're now they're trying to to figure it all out, and instead of picking up the phone at two o'clock in the afternoon, going, "Hey, Richie, what, what what's that sentence right there mean? What are you going to do if this happens?" Instead, they'll sit around and make it all up in their head, mm -hmm. and then we'll carry it like cancer all over the pit area. The second thing that keeps me awake is probably. <laughs> Is is uh, it's just more of the same, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just the people that that don't take the time to, to pick the phone up and just say, "Hey, what about this or what about that? What 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 can we do to help?" You know, they they'd rather you know. They, they, and, and here's the other thing: I was, I've kind of jumped around, but when a team runs bad, it's the series fault. <laughs> it's never because they have the best engines and the best chassis and the best shocks and the best springs and the best tires. And the best of everything. So now, now there's there's forty of them there like that. So that means that there's 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 almost twenty of them now that had a bad night. Yeah. And it can't be their fault. Nope. It's got to be somebody else's fault. And that that one that one kind of lurks on us and wears on us a little bit because then all of a sudden, well, you know, they're letting so and so get away with this, and they just make that up because they have to answer to the car owner on Monday morning. When he's standing there and they're unloading all that stuff and it's beat halfway to pieces, they got a repair bill and he's like, oh, so we didn't make the show. We got $100. It cost us 1000 to go and you tore up two more, three, four, five more thousand dollars worth of stuff here. What happened? Well, a lot of times everything but the truth comes out in that conversation. Yeah. And then I get, then we start getting beat up then by the car owners and things like that. You're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. That's what keeps me awake at night. Last question for you is we're talking with Richie Lewis, race director for the Lucas Oil Series, both the late models and the off-road, although you've been taken mostly over on the off-road series as the Lucas Oil has, um, you said you've had a friend of yours kind of pick up and, and take up some of your responsibilities. Uh, sure. My, my last question for you, I, I sent this over to you because I wanted to give you plenty of time to think about it. What is one thing that you would change about dirt racing? Or maybe not even just dirt racing, just racing in general. Promoter side, I'm racer side, with, crew chief side, anything. I'm a, I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick with the late model side because it's okay. still still such a huge passion that I have for that. I love my off road people and respect them. And man, I mean, it is in my blood, thick and deep, and I love it. But the the biggest thing today, if you could you could walk in and you could wave a magic wand today, that I think would uh, would help more people. More racetracks, more racers is getting every it's still it's still back to tires. It's still having people all on the same tires. I still say that they should all be on. Uh, put them all on LMs. Put them all on you know uh, 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 a 1300, a 1350, and a 1600, and let's go race the country and quit worrying about what 
compound works well here, works well there, and, and all the nuances of what it costs people to go and do. I think at the end of the day, if you could wave that magic wand, put everyone, everybody would all be on the same exact tires, and you can go race anywhere, anytime you want to. And that would take a big, big part of your budget, and you'd know exactly what to spend, and you could redirect some of your spend. You're never going to stop them from spending, yeah. But at least you could redistribute that spend into some other areas, and 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 then that just qualifies so much of the policing, it qualifies so much of the of the inventory, the manpower, all that it, all that goes into tires. I think if they were all on a, I'd have waved my Hoosier hat there for just a minute, you know. If they, if they were all on it, the, the three LM, four LM compounds all across the country, or some version of that would be, I don't think people still understand how powerful that would be and what that really means. And I had an opportunity one time. I was asked this by another guy, another series director. I said, you take my series for an hour and you tell me what, what you would do. And I'll tell you, I'll take yours for an hour. We said 10 minutes at the time. But if you could make these, these, these three or four changes, what would you do? And the first thing I told him with his was, I put yours on straight up on LM tires today. Make this easy on everybody, and that's that. That would be probably the, the, the biggest thing up front. And then, then there's several other measures that I think could help us, and uh, that go on and on and on and on. But that's 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 my answer. We'll save that for the next time we talk to you. How's that sound? Sure, sure. Richie, yeah, it's been a true pleasure. You. I've enjoyed talking to you and uh, try to take some time and, and relax a little bit before the season really gets going. Oh, we're good and we're blessed. <laughs> Thank you guys. And I hope you guys have, have a have a great season this season. And please let us know if we can ever help you out. Thanks, Richie. Have a good one. Have a blessed day. Once again, Richie Lewis with the Lucas Oil Series. Well-spoken man. Yes, sir. Thoroughly yes, sir. enjoyed. Well spoken. And he's been everywhere in the racing industry. Yeah. So he's he's got a lot of information and uh, a lot of input. That's our show for today. We got to uh, end it. We'll be back next weekend, January 15th. Boy, we're getting so close. We're almost, we're like a month and two weeks away, right? For yeah. the Daytona 500. I got to start sending out uh, rules packages for the uh, Pick'em's contest now. And remember to check over with Quaker Steak and Lube and see if they're going to have that Mav TV on the Chili Bowl here next Saturday night. Yep. We'll post that on Facebook. We'll create an event. We'll let you know. So if, if you're friendly with the social media, you'll know right away. We'll obviously try to uh, we'll do our best to get all the stuff on the air. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks for Joe's Carding and Quaker Steak and Loop for sponsoring the show. We'll be back next weekend to do it all again. I'm Dan Taylor. That's Derek Houston. This has been The Front Stretch. The official watering hole of the front stretch has you covered any day of the week with the best wings, great burgers, and amazing steaks. Each weekday from 4 to 6 is happy hour, featuring dollar off draft and well drinks plus $4 Luberitas. Mondays are kids night. Tuesdays are all you can eat wings for $12.95. And the lube even delivers to the Council Bluffs area. Like Quaker Steak and Lube Council Bluffs on Facebook for a full list of weekly events. Get to Quaker Steak and Lube. Mid-America Drive, Council Bluffs. Joe's Carding in Council Bluffs is the high-octane excitement you've been looking for. It's the Metro's largest indoor track with eco-friendly, low-emission engines. You can enjoy fast-paced road course racing just across the river at Joe's Carding. Located near Bass Pro in the Mid-America Center on 23rd Avenue and online at joescarding.com. That's carding with a K. Open Monday to Thursday, 2 to 10, Fridays until 11, Saturdays 11 to 11, and Sundays noon to 8. This has been the Front Stretch Radio Show, presented by Joe's Carding and Council Bluffs. To contact Dan or Dirk, find them on Facebook at The Front Stretch or email them at frontstretch590 at gmail.com. If you missed any part of today's show or want to hear a previous show, subscribe to the Joe's Carding YouTube page where you can find almost every Front Stretch show. 